Hey everybody, this is the Pistorino Show. Today we are going to discuss uh, this guy. This is something new, right? So we're going to go through this, explain what I did, explain what modifications I had to do to get it the way I wanted it. Um, and then after we've gone through all of this, we're going to get into... Uh, some mail calls for the show truck and some explanation of what we're going to do with those parts. So let's dig right in and let's talk about the new custom TRX4M kind of a tarantula in Jorah buggy. So first, I started out with a Enjora Tarantula chassis, uh, which is a buggy type chassis. I had to cut the front end off of it and the back end off of it, which made this kind of moon buggy. Um, and I think it looks original and really cool. Uh, I covered the orange plastic with this electron blue um, very shiny I don't know if you can see it on camera but it's very shiny uh, and then I left the sides the orange so there's just a little bit of orange trim around everything because we have orange NSDRC servos so that kind of matches um, so let's start at the bottom so here we have um, Injura axles. These are not portals. These are just standard axles. We have um, underdrive in the rear, overdrive in the front, just like some of the others. We have high trail rear links in the rear and in the front and we have drive shafts rear drive shafts in the front and in the back so it's completely this vehicle with all low steer the front and the back are the exact same so everything here is here I mean it's just a mirror of each other if you get rid of the chassis Everything's exactly the same. Shocks, spacers, everything. So, um, the one thing that allows us to do that is the OPI um, transmission plate. Um, this one actually allows for you to use the rears in the front. Because normally in the past what I've had to do is I would use the rear lowers in the front but then I would have to use a 60 millimeter upper that came from the SCX 24 um, so before I had to run stainless because there's no there weren't any brass ones for the SCX 24 so with this transmission plate from OPI it's mirror image here uh, if you look at the stock I don't have one near me where I'd show you. If you look at the stock transmission plate, this is what the rear looks like, but then the front, these lowers go back further. So it's not symmetrical. So you had to run a shorter upper to match the longer lower. But with this, since they're symmetrical, you can run the exact same lengths in the front and the rear or in the rear and front, and you're good to go. So these are Enjora Brass Links, high trail um, links, and then the Enjora drive shafts 
they don't have to be high trail drive shafts. They can just be regular Enduro drive shafts. Uh, we have the Enduro lay down servo mounts. Um, and then the big thing, you know, we've got our NSDRC RS100 micro servos, front and rear. So the exact same thing. You can see how it's, the front and the rear are exactly the same if you get rid of the chassis. Um, so no real modifications had to be done to that. Um, the wheels we've got in Jor 1.3, um, chrome wheels with the 1.3 uh, Swamp Claw tires all the way around. The fronts do have 1.55 weights in them. So you can see the rear squish, squish. The fronts just squish a little bit because there's a huge brass weight inside there. That helps us crawl and when the, you don't want the tire to deflate all the way when you're trying to dig so we're digging from the front so it helps in that way too all right so that's the lower chassis port or the lower drive line portion um, I'm still waiting on the transmission and motor the transmission and motor is the new combo from Enjora it's a brushed motor this will be the first time I run a brush motor in probably 20 years. So it'll be something new for me. So I've got the other parts of the drive shafts waiting for the transmission. And then I've got our radio link receiver. This is the F4 FGM. It does have a gyro in it if you ever need it. Um, but it's a four channel receiver, very tiny, great for the 118 scales. Then we also have the Enjora uh, MB100 ESC. Plugins are very similar. Matter of fact, this is a FureTech plugin for the battery, and it mounts right up. So if you have a FureTech but you want to go to the Enjora brushed, um, this is easy. It comes with all the other wires. It comes with other battery connection wires too, but I use this XT30, so it mounts right in there. Nice power button here. For some reason, that's hard to find on a good ESC is a good power button, so I like that. Uh, nice aluminum case, but uh, so this will be going in here. Once the transmission and motor gets here, and like I said, this is a brushed system, so something very new for me in quite some time. Okay, let's get into the suspension just a little bit here. Um, as you can see, we have Enjora 59 millimeter shocks. Very smooth, work very well. But we have the regular mounts here. These are the regular shock mounts, the plastic. Um, and I've got them separated by solid M3 aluminum braces. I got, well, I got one in the front, but it's underneath the hood. Got two in the back. And then I got the one long 65 millimeter spacer or standoff, whatever you want to call it. So the shocks, I didn't want to mount the plastic. And due to my layout with the extra long links, I couldn't mount the shock where I wanted it to. So I used, these are the uppers. For flex blades, the upper flex blades. Now, I have them solid mounted 
These are not flex blades anymore. These are just shock mounts. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. So I just took the uppers. I took out the, the part that lets it move. And I just connected that as hard as I could so that it's stuck in place and doesn't move. Does that make sense? So by doing that, I was able to put my shocks inboard and not have them stick out so much because you can't put more than one spacer on the bottom. So you can see they go inward just a tad, which is perfect. When fully closed, that bar doesn't hit the servo. I mean, you can get it to, but fully closed, it stops right before the servo, which is what you want. And then full extension, um, it'll move just fine. In the front, we did the exact same thing. So we've got the upper flex blade that is solid mounted. Uh, one other thing you can see, we took the springs off the shocks. Um, and then the front doesn't get anywhere near the servo, so it can actually, I set it up lower. Because um, if, if you look, this will explain it. In the rear, the flex blade goes in, which moves the shock further in, which stops it just before the servo. In the front, I did them going inward. One, you have to do that because the long links, the front of this vehicle is not made for the long links. So to get the servo to fit, or to get the shock to fit, you would need to run it like all the way out here. And you wouldn't have any throw in your shock left. You'd have to get like 70 millimeter shocks, which you could. But I like this little flex blade look. Um, and again, they're not flex blades. They're solid mounted. So that's a little bit of custom work that had to be done. Um, enjoy shocks, enjoy flex blades, NSDRC servos, NSDRC servo horns. Um, and then we've got the Enjoy tarantula. Uh, in the back, we cut the back off. I cut the back off. And I've got these two very sturdy braces. I mean, this is very sturdy now. It's not going anywhere. Got the one big aluminum brace. I don't know if you can see that in the back. But the big aluminum brace. Looks like I might have to wrap this corner again. It keeps popping up. Um, and the chassis came off from here. So I cut that out too. I cut all that out. Just to have a nice clean look. Uh, Got to enjoy a battery tray in here. Um, the sides, I didn't have to modify. The front, we cut out all the chassis because it would have hit the servo. It would have landed right on the servo. And I wanted it to be lower. So we uh, cut that out. Then I cut out the hood just to give us a little color in the front. Um, it serves no purpose, but it's just a color. Because without it, it would just be blank and you'd see the motor, which is probably fine. But with this little thing on here, it looks pretty mean. It makes it look more like a, I don't know, an old school buggy. Like the VW buggies back in the day. What was that? I don't know, sand buggies. Not the actual beetle shell, but... Sand rail, that's what they were. Um, so cut all that up, put the light on it. That's simple. I think that's it, guys. It's amazing how fast you can put these things together when you've done a hundred of them. It's they're just it's kind of not even worth it for me to do a project on these anymore because 
I'm looking for projects to take time and this, you know, I put this together in a day. Well, two days because I spent a day trying different wraps. I mean, I got a bunch of different wraps that I was trying. I tried this. Uh, just didn't look right. I was going to go full orange. Didn't like it. This blue was too light. And uh, I've got a ton of different wraps that I could use. So I decided on that blue, which I think is an amazing color. So um, I did I did receive my other chassis. This is another tarantula. I bought this because I wasn't sure if I was going to like the way I cut it. But I really love the way I cut it, so I don't need this anymore. So, I might save that for a later date. You never know. I might want to build something else. But I have to say, out of all my buggies, um, you know, I've got Green with Envy, which is, you know, my OG. Uh, then I've got Beast Mode which is similar to this. I've got the Red Cat truck, the Ascent 18, and then I got this buggy, and I think I like this buggy most of all. Now, I'm going to run their transmission and brush system for a while, but then I'll probably put the brushless system in that new transmission to see how that looks, too. Um, but I think if this has the brushless system in it, it's going to be unstoppable. Uh, we can try the side test. Side, look at that. That's the best side test. So I don't know why this is such a big deal. I know it's center of gravity um, based, but if your crawler sits still on its side, uh, it's going to perform better. You can even, another way is to do it leaning like that. I mean, your wheel's at a 25 degree angle, and it's still sitting just fine. So, that's good news. I can't wait to see how high it can climb. It's about 85 degrees right there. Right there is 90. And it's just bouncing. It, she's going to be a crawler. Especially since she's front drive. She's going to be able to get. Uh, as long as the tires stick. It's going to be a monster. Got smudge on the roof. All right, so that's it on the little guy. Let's uh, let's move on to the big guy. What do you say? All right. I don't have a name for this. I think, uh, yeah, I don't know what to call it. I don't know. I'll have to come up with a name. You know I like to name the good ones. All right, so next up the bats. nut all right so we got this guy um and we're in the titanium mode getting rid of black stuff so i call my friends at ram jam Why am I doing this? Because there are so many parts that they make for this vehicle 
you can have their parts all over it. They're decently priced. And they're made out of high grade titanium. So look them up, Ram Jam. And if you want to scan their code, All right, so let's look, see what we got. First up, these are Arma Creighton 6S Titanium Center Dog Bone Set. So these are the dog bones. Full titanium. They are so light and they're beautiful. Once I pull out the uh, the ones I got in there now, I'll show a comparison. So that's the drive shafts, center drive shafts. And here we have, these are the Arma Creighton 6S titanium rear axle set. So these replace these long black ones. Let's see if I can get it in the picture here. I don't know how far back the camera goes, but you can see and then this goes right down here. I mean that's gonna look look amazing. They're light as can be and they're strong. Very, very strong. So we got the centers, we got the rears, and then just for fun, we've got the Arma Creighton 6S Titanium Front CVD set. So these are the fronts. And you can see they got the ball on the end ready. Very good looking pieces. No burrs, no rough edges. I mean, these are just all beautifully done. Um, and to finish these off, I've uh, got the CVD rebuild set. And then I've got these. And just so you know, this is what I'll be doing after the video is putting all these together. You can see we've got the nice number 45 steel. Those go in the rear. These go in the front. Got some set screws. So these will, this will hold this here. This will hold this here. I think I might be backwards. Nah. Yeah. These are the fronts. These are the rears. You can tell the rears because this goes right in there. It's smooth, smooth as silk, beautiful. All right, I'm pretty excited about those. Then, so we've got 
all of that, but then we needed these because I took the stock ones out. I actually have an extra set from ADU, but these are from Ramjan, and these are steel for the center drive shaft. So these go on the, the diff um, output gear or input gear, whatever you want to call it. And then the drive shafts go right in. There's a certain way to do it. So the drive shafts go right in. So that's basically everything for the drive line except for the diffs, but I've already replaced the diffs. Um, so this will have a completely new drive line. The, the basher is going to get all the drive shafts out of this because I put, I upgraded the drive shafts. These are all 45 steel drive shafts, but I wanted Ram Jam titanium. So I got it because it's the best. So why wouldn't I? So the entire drive line, except for the diffs, is going to be Ram Jam titanium. So, I mean, you can't beat that. So that's the drive line. That's the new titanium parts. So Ram Jam wise, we've got pretty much everything that they make, except for I didn't go with their shock mounts because these are EXB, which are thicker, um, and they don't make them for the EXB yet. The others work, but um, the threads on this, these are bigger. We'll try these. If these fail, first thing I'm doing is calling Ram Jam and, and getting their titanium ones. So, we'll see. And I think that's about it. I think I've got everything else. Uh, they do offer wheel nuts uh, and wheel hubs, but they're short. I, I need the extensions, so I can't really use what they make for that. But again, if these fly off and crack or whatever then yeah I'll, I'll get the ram jams for sure all right so that is what we got going on on the shoe truck so basically what I have to do is I have to install I have to take everything out of this one install all this new stuff take the stuff I took out of this and install it in the other truck so that it's fully upgraded. All right. Very cool. Um, also, I got another set of springs that I could try. I'm not quite sure. These are not as strong as these. So I'm still waiting on the fronts. I'm waiting on the front springs and I'm waiting on the NSDRC servo. Once I have those two, um, we can drive this one and we'd be able to bash that one. So, all right guys. Um, I guess that's it for today's show. I got to get busy building. I got stuff to do. So, thanks for watching once again. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, uh, please put them below. Uh, please give us a thumbs up to let us know I'm doing all right with the videos. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I don't put out a ton of crap, so you're not going to get bombarded with messages and things. So, um, subscribe for me. Get us up there. We're almost at a thousand. 
we're getting so close to a thousand. Um, once we get to a thousand, I'll give away an RC vehicle. So we'll look forward to that. I might do a video on that sometime soon. Uh, that when we hit a thousand, I'll give away uh, maybe a Red Cat Ascent 18, something like that. All right. Well, thanks for watching. And, and until next time, peace out.